In this video, we will talk about motion of an object in a plane, that is, in two dimensions. Examples of motion in two dimensions include projectile motions under the influence of gravity and circular motion. We will explain important concepts such as position and displacement, velocity and acceleration as they apply to motions in two dimensions. Position of a point, say point P, is defined by a position vector like this. So, a vector that extends from the origin to where the point is. Now, we shall denote this vector like this, R with a subscript P. Now, this vector, or this point, has two coordinates. Let's call the X coordinate of this point P, X, P. And the Y coordinate is Y, P. So the vector RP that identifies the position of that point P is written as xp i hat plus yp j hat. So this is the position vector for point P. Next, let's look at displacement. Assume an object moves along this curve on two dimensions. So it starts from an initial point i and it goes all the way to the final point f so that is the final point and it travels along that curve the initial point has a position vector let's call it ri and the final point has a position vector let's call it r sub f the dotted arrow in green is the displacement vector for the motion. The expression for the displacement is given by the final position vector minus the initial position vector, as we defined in a case of one-dimensional motion. Average velocity. So this is a vectorial quantity measured in the unit of meter per second. Now going back to the motion of an object on a plane like this with a displacement of say delta r so this is the initial point this is the final point and that is the displacement vector now what is the average velocity for this motion the average velocity is the displacement for the motion over the time it takes to accomplish that displacement so delta t is the time it takes to accomplish the displacement and you can see the unit is meter per second on the other hand, instantaneous velocity per motion as shown here in the diagram from an initial point to the final point is the velocity at a particular time. So if the particle is here, the velocity will be going like that and we denote it like that. So t is the time at that when the object is at that point. And likewise, when the object gets to this point, the velocity will be heading that way so that is the instantaneous velocity and the time is the time when the, when the object gets to that point and so on and so forth. Now mathematically, instantaneous velocity is defined in terms of time derivative. So it is a time derivative of the position vector. So this is the position vector of this object as the object moves, it changes. So it is a function of time. Next, the average acceleration. So it is measured in the unit of meter per second squared, as we have learned from the one-dimensional motion. Now let's assume an object moves along a curve like that, in, the, in that specified trajectory. And let's focus on two points, point 1 and point 2. So when the object is at point 1, the velocity is pointing like that, in that direction. Let's call that velocity v1. When the object at point 2, it points along that direction. Let's call it v2. Now, the change in the velocity between these two points can be written as the final velocity between these two points, which is v2, minus the initial velocity, which is v1, and that difference is the change in the velocity between these two points. Now let's say at that 
change occurs in an interval of delta t seconds. So the average acceleration is defined as delta v over delta t. So it simply measures how much the velocity changes over a given time interval. And of course the unit is meter per second squared. Now instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration is the acceleration vector at a particular time t. So as the object moves along this curve shown, let's say the object is at this point, call it point 1, the acceleration is let's say a t1 because the object is at that point at time t1 and when the object gets at let's say point 2 the acceleration is a t2 which is the uh, value of the acceleration vector time t2 and so on and so forth. Now what about the direction of this instantaneous acceleration? How do we define the direction? If in general at this point the velocity of the object is pointing like that. So this is the instantaneous velocity. Now the direction of its instantaneous acceleration does not have the same direction as the velocity vector at that point. So it may point like that. Now how do we get to this conclusion? Before we explain that, let's write down the definition of instantaneous acceleration. It is defined as the time derivative of instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous acceleration is the rate of change of instantaneous velocity, like that. So essentially it means it's a change in velocity over time. So let's use this to explain the direction of the acceleration. Let's look at the two points, point 1 and 2. The two green arrows show the velocities at point 1 and point 2 respectively. Now let's compute the difference v2 minus v1. So v2 minus v1 is given by this triangle and this is the difference of v2 minus v1. Now since acceleration is proportional to this difference, you see that the acceleration is pointing in that direction. So it is not obvious at all the direction of the acceleration and we know that it is not the same as the direction of the velocity vector. So the direction of the acceleration vector is completely different from the one-dimensional case with respect to the direction of the velocity vector. Now if you note, if you recall the previous video on one dimension, if this is the velocity vector for an object moving in one dimension, the acceleration can be this way, in the case of which the object is speeding up, or this way in the case of which the object is slowing down. So it can be parallel or anti-parallel with respect to the velocity vector in the case of one dimension, but in the case of two dimensions it's completely different. We shall show how to use all these equations with an example next. So in this example, an object is moving on a plane. The x and y coordinates measured in meters vary with time and it's given by these two equations. Now calculate first the object's displacement and the average velocity from t equals to 1 to t equals to 3 seconds. Now displacement is calculated by taking the difference in the position vector of the final point, in this case at 3 seconds, minus the position vector at 1 second. So we need to calculate these two separately. Now what is R3? R3 in vector notation is x3 i hat plus y3 j hat. So that is R3. And R1, likewise, it's x at 1 second i hat plus y at 1 second j hat. By substituting t equals to 3 in here and in there, the first bracket becomes 21 i hat plus 28.5 j hat. 
So that is the first bracket. And by substituting t equals to 1 in the same functions, the second bracket will become 5i hat plus 5.5j hat. So after taking the difference, you get the displacement vector to be 16i hat plus 23j hat meters. Having calculated the displacement, the average velocity can now be readily computed. So it is the displacement that we have calculated below, 16i hat plus 23j hat, over the time interval, which is from 1 to 3 seconds, so 3 minus 1. And that's going to give you 8i hat plus 11.5j hat meter per second. Next, let's calculate the velocity at time t equals to 2 seconds. So that is an instantaneous velocity at t equals to 2. Now we know the definition of instantaneous velocity. It is the time derivative of position vector. Now what is our position vector? Our position vector is, in terms of i hat j hat notation, it is xt i hat plus yt j hat. So we need to take the derivative of these two functions with respect to time. So upon substituting the x function and the y function in here, we get the following. And now we just have to take the derivative with respect to time, which will give us the first derivative is simply 4t i hat. The second derivative will give you 5 plus 1.5 t squared j hat. Since we are interested in the velocity at t equals to 2 seconds, that's going to give us 8 i hat plus 5 plus 1.5 times 2 squared j hat, which is 8 i hat plus 11 j hat meter per second. So this is the instantaneous velocity at t equals to 2 seconds. Now let's determine the average acceleration from t equals to 1 to t equals to 3 seconds. The average acceleration for the time interval is given by this formula right here. So we need to compute the instantaneous velocity at 3 seconds and 1 second. So let's do just that. Velocity 3 seconds, it's given by 12i hat plus 18.5 j hat meter per second. Velocity at 1 second is 4i hat plus 6.5j hat meter per second. Substituting these two results in here will give us the average acceleration, which is 4i hat plus 6j hat meter per second squared. Finally, the acceleration at t equals to 2 seconds. Now, we are here interested in calculating the instantaneous acceleration at t equals to 2 seconds. So that means we have to take the derivative of that velocity function with respect to time and substitute t equals to 2 in the result. Now, the derivative is 4i hat, because when you take the derivative of 4t, you simply get 4, plus the derivative of 5 is 0, the derivative of 1.5 t cubed, a t squared, is 3 t, so that is j hat. So evaluating the above result at t equals to 2 seconds will give you 4 i hat plus 3 times 2 j hat, which is 4 i hat plus 6 j hat meter per second squared. So this is the acceleration at t equals to 2 seconds. I hope you find the content of today's video useful. If so, please like, share and subscribe to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.